Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money. Hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. And welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you that are leaving reviews and sharing this. Oh my gosh. I love it. I have had lots of client referrals. I've had lots of people say that they're sharing the podcast. And, you know, I can do all the marketing in the world, but the best is you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Today, We are going to talk about flexible premium payments. (laughs) I have never talked about this. I actually had a client ask me this question and said, you know, that really makes sense. And and you've never talked about it. And I have a reason I've never talked about it. And I just thought it was a long explanation. But, you know, it's also needed. So a lot of people are concerned about how am I going to make this payment? Can I afford it every year? How much is it going to be? And so you don't call me to do the first meeting, which is free, but you guys aren't calling because you're scared you're not going to have the money or you're not going to be able to make that payment every year or you think that you need to figure it all out before you talk to me. Well, my friends, that's not how it goes, silly. If we have an hour and a half meeting, I help you figure out how much to pay every year, what that looks like. And then in that meeting, I go over the flexibility of the payment. And I know I have touched on this in other podcasts, but there is a max premium that has to be paid every year. And then the way I structure these policies, there is a minimum payment that needs to be paid every year just to make sure everything continues on and you have that policy there in the future. So let's say that you set a policy up and it's $10,000 a year of premium. Well, You ideally want to pay $10,000 a year. So when we set that policy up, we want to be able to pay $10,000 a year. That is the purpose. That is what's creating the banking policy that we have access to borrow against. But there is also a minimum premium that's due. And it's not $10,000 a year. I don't know exactly what that dollar amount is. Typically, it's anywhere between... 50 to 40 to 50 percent of the maximum. So, anywhere between four to five thousand dollars in this scenario that's going to have to be paid every year. So, if you have a year that you know business didn't go well, farming didn't go well, whatever it is you're doing, now we only have to pay the minimum and then you can add the rest later throughout the year. Now, with that being said, not every company is equally as flexible. There are some companies that there's going to be far less due, but they might do a seven-year average, where in the first seven years, whatever you pay in is all you can pay in from year eight on. Some companies have a three-year rolling So in the last three years, have you paid 75% of what goes to cash value in the paid-up additions rider? If you haven't, now you can't pay anything to the paid-up additions rider and cash value going forward. So every company is different. The company that I use is because of the fact that they have the flexibility. Farmers and business owners need flexibility. We don't know 
what our income is going to be next year. And so when we're looking at setting up a policy and I go through this, I can see where your numbers are. I can see where we have payments going. I can see if we're overpaying debt. I can tell what's comfortable. I am not going to go in and be like, oh my gosh, let's take 80% of your income and put it into life insurance. No, 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 no. We need to make sure things are going to be able to be paid. Now, there are times when people will say, no, Mary Jo, that's not high enough. I can pay more than that. And there's one client I have in particular that we set his policy up quite high. And I said, he's like, I can't make that premium payment. I can't even pay the minimum. I'm like, why in the world is that so high? He said, because I didn't listen to you. You told me it was too high. And I didn't listen and I said I could pay for it and now I can't pay for it. Well, at least it wasn't my fault is what I thought because I don't want to be the one that gets the phone call that says, Mary Jo, I can't pay my premium because you set it up too high. Okay? I will usually be the ones that pull the reins in, says, are you sure you can pay that? And at the end of the day, it's your decision. You're the one that's writing the check and signing off on it, and you're the one that better be comfortable with it. So in my meetings, when I am going over all of your stuff, and I am showing you how the policy is structured, and I'm, we're talking about how loans work, that is so you understand. None of this comes back to me that I say, this is what you're doing and this is all you can do. It is you becoming the banker, not Mary Jo being your banker. You becoming the banker. You need to take the responsibility to learn the infinite banking concept. You need to take the responsibility to understand the financial side of it. Because if you don't do that, none of this is going to work. A lot of people are concerned, which I always kind of laugh about. I find it funny that people say, well, what happens if the life insurance company goes under? Well, what happens if the dollar crashes? But nobody says, well, what happens if the stock market crashes and I lose all my money again? Really? It's so funny how we hold the stock market to such a different standard than what we hold everything else in life. I digress. So when you set a policy up, we want to do that knowing this is our max, that's our minimum. What happens if? What is that going to look like? Can we add extra next year? What are the exact rules for that paid up additions rider and what company are we using? Now, the majority of my business I'm going to do with one company because of the fact that they are the most flexible for premium payments. You could have five bad years in business. You could have 10 bad years in farming. We don't know. So we need to prepare for those things And look long term because you don't want to put a bunch of money into a policy and then you have to cancel it before you get to that break even point. And by break even, I mean when your cash value equals the amount of premium you put in. If you have to cancel before then, you've lost money. That's not the point here. The point is to make sure that we can keep this thing going for a hundred plus years if we want to or until death, whatever comes first. So don't be scared to set up your meeting. Don't be scared to think, oh, well, I can't do this, or what if? You don't need to think about the what ifs because they're already planned for. And there's flexibility. And we don't want you just paying minimum premium all the time. I mean, I have clients that do that, They're like, oh, well, I'm going to pay $10,000, but I'm only going to put five in this year because I needed that money for other things. What? If you never put it in the policy, you're never going to have it to borrow from. So why would you even start the policy? 
fill it full. If you're using cash that could have gone into the policy, you can borrow against it in seven to 10 days. So why not? Other companies are 30 days, right? Every company is a little bit different there too. But if you started a policy with the intent to fill it up, then why aren't you filling it up? And if you're a client listening to this and you're not filling it up, you better get on my schedule so we can talk about why you're not filling it up. We are not thinking infinite banking. If we're not putting the money in the policy first, we're not thinking infinite banking. And I had a guy last week say to me, well, oh, I don't know if I should put it all in right away. But if I don't, I'm going to go buy something with cash and it's never going to go in. That's exactly right. Get it in there, borrow against it, buy whatever it is you need to buy. But if we don't ever get it in, are you disciplined enough to actually save enough to get it in? Most people are not. So get it in right away, borrow against it, buy whatever it is you need to buy. It's really that simple. But don't get all up in your head thinking you need to have all the answers before you talk to me. And this gentleman had a great comment and said, you know, I I didn't schedule my meeting for a long time because I was just trying to figure out how much could I do and how much could I pay and and how is that going to work? And to my fault, I didn't say anything. Because every company is different. The rules are different. Depends on your age. Depends on how the policy is structured. Depends on the length of the policy. The type of policy. Like All of those things matter. So everything I've said here is not written in stone. Things change. But how do you know that unless you call? Unless you schedule your appointment. You don't know that. So schedule your appointment and then we can go over it. And I'm only booked out a couple weeks. So it's not like you even have to wait a long time to see me. Everybody's busy outside doing things. They don't want to sit on a computer and chit chat with me. (laughs) So if you are willing to chit chat, schedule your appointment and let's talk. But I hope that clarifies a little bit, gives you a little bit of peace of mind that you don't have to come up with a whole ton of money and that I'm not going to steal all your money. I'm not in the business of stealing. That would be awful. I don't look good in stripes <laughs> or orange. Anyway, let me know if you have questions, if you have comments, email me at Mary Jo without the bank. And I am happy to answer those. If you know, if you have a topic you want to hear, as always, email me as well. Otherwise, grab the book and we'll talk to you next week. Have a great week. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals.